What's up guys and welcome back to another installment of For the Greater Wah. It is the Sound Alchemist back at it again with Gersh1 and we're going to answer more of your awesome questions. Yes, so let's get started with the first one coming from Darkest Dude Media and this is a long one so sit tight and enjoy. I've always theorized that Kaldor Drago is a Primarch since the Grey Knights are really just psionically powerful. Um, could the Great Knights have been one of the two lost chapters who were just absorbed into the chamber militants of the Inquisition because of their psychic powers? And this would fit into the Primarch's lore since the Great Knights themselves only have vague reports of Kaldol in battle and have very few if no official records of their chapter master's existence since he fell into the warp. Obviously, I'm not going to say for sure that he is one, but it does seem likely since they've never measured his power level. Um, again, it would fit into the into the video either you or 40k theories did about two missing Primarchs and their legions. One of my other theories is that one of the Primarchs could be the one who created the Legion of the Damned, as they are now, as we are not currently show, sure if they are a real chapter of Space Marines. Um, it goes on and on, but that's basically the gist of it. So, first part of your awesome question slash theory. Is Drago a missing Primark? Your thoughts? Uh, no, I don't think he's a missing Primark just because I, there is record of um, Caldor Drago being in the Eighth Brotherhood. No, what it, brotherhood? It, it was one of the Brotherhoods. I yeah, forget. so there is records of him being there, and you have to make your way up right. to that. Like he wasn't just like this awesome Grandmaster dude. Like yeah, he went through the ranks. Yeah, so that would kind of give him backstory mm -hmm. and show that he wasn't godly during that phase. And from my understanding, as soon as a Primarch hits a planet, it's like everything he's changes. Fucking God, right. yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of kills it. And um, I mean, yeah, you're right. He does kick ass and like take names literally. Mm -hmm. He freaking carved his uh, Grand Master's insignia, his insignia, into a demon prince. So that's, I mean, what other guy can you say does things like that besides Primarchs? And he poops in the warp. Right. I mean, who can who can poop in the warp? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, good question, uh, but highly unlikely since there is already lore that dictates it's not true. Yeah. But the other one is pretty interesting stuff. Is the Legion of the Damned the army of one of the lost Primarchs? That, I, yeah, that is a no also, because the in the lore, it, it tries to be all ambiguous. It's like, oh, maybe, I hope that's the right word. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, maybe they are, or nobody knows who they are, but no, we know who they are. They were the um, Flamehawks, or like Firehawks, or something like that. Um, so they were a recorded, chapter chapter and um i like to think that they were given that power by the emperor not Caldor drago um i think the emperor gave Caldor drago and the legion of the damned the same power right or that he manipulated the warp in a way to to bless them i guess both both of them with the power to enter and exit the warp at their will mm -hmm. with the effects of the Legion of the Dam burned to death. Caldor Drago, who knows what really does happen to him. Right, I mean, can he? I think the thing is, though, is like, since he's able to go in and out at will, yeah, he's like forever doomed to never be in one place or the other for too long. So, good question, but on to the next. Yeah. Um, LTLM says, this was really awesome. Uh, I read yeah. this and I was like, damn, I was blown away. We are the watchers of the one mind, the subscribers, the legion of likes. We are the fans, the death of the hate, collectors and players. We, we are, are one. one. That's awesome. That we need to, really good. We need to do something with that. Mm -hmm. That is our theme song. Make it into shirts or something. Yeah. <laughs> Next really, question. Really good one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Kaolin Lozanov. In the Horus Heresy novels, it is stated that, the, that both of the Primarchs have been found as they were punished and that other Primarchs do not speak of them. Sanguinius was afraid that the same fate may happen to his legion if they understood about his genetic flaw. This is also stated in the Fear to Thread Tread novel. Also, it is stated that at some point the Ultramarine's legion did double its strength, and at some point, most probably by absorbing what is left of both of the lost legions. 
Uh, the Space Wolf stated that they have fought another Legion, but that they are going back to this fight with Angron. Uh, by the increase of the size of the Ultramarines, most probably the two Primarchs were just assassinated by Malkador or the Emperor or both. Um, good insight, but yeah, uh, you're right about uh, Sanguinius stating that, you know, he doesn't want his legion to die off like the others. And I think Luthor also said something along the same lines that, don't talk about our brothers, the one that we have lost, or something like that. So there are hints that they have been... Uh, dealt with by the Emperor. Why? Who knows? Golden Trawick. Please do a Minotaur faction of the Space Marine lore video. We will. Yeah, I used to play Minotaurs, so I am, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Maximo Princeps. Hey guys, the second Primarch could probably be Sigmar, and the 11th could probably be the Primarch who was tainted by Malau. 11 is the sacred number of Malau, isn't it? Uh, what do you guys think about that? Maybe that was the... As far as like the Primarch being tainted, maybe that was the um, hope for GW, but then that changed once Malau, Malau was destroyed. Right. And Sigmar, it's all convoluted, so I, I doubt he's... I mean, I wish that would be awesome if you could tie Warhammer Fantasy to Warhammer 40k, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it would make it would make interesting lore, but maybe it would clear up the cloudiness in Age of Sigmar. But who knows? Raxafion. My theory is that at least one of the Primarchs was untouchable, was an untouchable, and the other was a traitor. Both killed by Malkador and the Emperor. It would be a wall of text to explain this, but think about it, especially the untouchable theory. We will th think about it, and like I said, we are going to make a lore video for all the possibilities of all cool theories right? <laughs> for the Lost Primarchs. Each Tundra 12. I think you need this. <laughs> War, these the orcs, and we's the biggest and the strongest. I'm the biggest war boss. I'm bigger than Gorguts. I'm bigger than Nazdrag. I'm even bigger than God School. I'm war boss Big Daka of Clan Blood Daka. Ha ha ha. Daka Daka Daka. Great video, guys. And this is my personal war boss of mine. Own, own or clan. Keep up the good work. That's awesome, man. That's what I love to hear. Um, what is it? Blood. No. War boss Big Daka. Um, it makes me think of that one, um, what is it, Fires of War or something like that? What's, it, what's that other YouTube channel? Flames of War. Mm. Flames of War converted this orc war boss and they put like a ton of guns on his back and he just looks monstrous, um, but awesome. If you have pictures, if you haven't posted anywhere, comment down below so we can check them out. Or put them on our Facebook page because we love showcasing your guys' art moves. One Mind Syndicate. At Facebook. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nadav Banks, the Sisters of Silence were Psyker Hunters. The Sisters of Battle are the military arm of the Imperial Church slash cult. And 40k Theory said that the Sisters of Silence are still around. That's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Ikotera Killzor. Hey guys, I I have a question for you. What do you think will happen to the universe of Warhammer 40k if the 21st son of the Emperor suddenly emerged? Mind blown. Let's answer that real quick. Uh, what do you think would happen? So that's basically the birth of another Primarch. Um, first of all, the first question would be, is he on Terra? Or did he actually get put on another planet? Because if he was on Terra, that's going to change things tremendously. Because now it's like there's a new powerhouse there. And it's like, will they try and take control of, like, the Emperor and, like, try to kill him completely off of the Golden Throne? Will he try and, like, revive him or resurrect him? Or will, he, or will he just try to lead the humans into, like, another great crusade? I mean, there's a lot of questions, but literally, it's going to bring up a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of theories and just, it's going to change things. Yeah, it would, make, it would make a mess of things, too, because mm -hmm. it's like, originally there was 20. Where the hell did the 21st come from? Right. Was it during the whole um, Emperor Secret uh, project? Why would he make a th uh, another one? And why only one? He made 20 the first time. 
So I think it would just be a huge fluff fuck <laughs> if GW did that. I'm asking because I'm actually sh strongly considering writing a long fanfic about the 21st son of the Emperor. And notice that I have not mentioned him as a Primarch. Care to guess why? Because he's part of the... What are they called? Custodes? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Eternal? No, Sensei. Sensei. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, we want to hear it, so do it. Yeah. Um, it's going to be hard, though, to make it good. Because, like I said, I think it would create more questions than answers. answers yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have to answer your own questions with facts that's been backed up. It's it's gonna be a convoluted mess. But if you can do it, go for it. Oh, you keep he keeps uh, ask, or commenting. He says spoiler answer because he is actually birthed by womb, not p pod. Oh, so it's some some Jesus shit. <laughs> the mother is not human. The emperor's power nearly matched up to hers. So probably uh, Eldar, and her powers been in decline for thousands of years. Mm. Oh, so yeah, maybe another. Yeah. All this is not official lore, by the way. Of course. Right. Uh, That's interesting. I want to hear it. Yeah. I want to I hear them per schoolie pooping with, uh, mm -hmm. with just, just do like a three chapter thing with them just going at it. Yeah, like Making just rough sex. <laughs> like blood and shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a turn off. Hey, Slanesh. Ah. <laughs> Pinky Bird 77. I have a Thunderfire cannon called Biggest Dickus. <laughs> it's painted on the side and everything. I uh, just thought I'd put that out there as I've heard someone's username is also Biggest Dickus. Yeah. Uh, also, Guardsmen can't have power armor as it requires a black carapace, which only Space Marines and some inquis Inquisitors have. So you are correct. Yep. But you never know. Advancements yep. in technology are upon us. Lesto. No, Gage Lesto. Can you team up with 40k theories? We would love to. That guy's doing his own thing, though. Like the, the last thing I know with 40k theories is that he is doing his own fanfic narration thing. Uh, so check out fan or 40k theories if you haven't done so already. Very informative. And just an awesome channel to subscribe yeah. to. Cool guy. Never. Not that we've met him or anything. No, but he seems cool. <laughs> he might kill puppies on his free time. Who knows? You never you know. know. You don't know. Abe Olimedo. Have you guys ever played Dark Heresy or Death Watch? Basically the D&D version of 40k. No, but I want to. It seems interesting. You need to have a good group, though. You need to yeah. have an imaginative group and somebody that knows the lore. Mm -hmm. Which is really hard to find. Like right. It's just us two that I think know the lore as much as we do. And the other people in our team aren't very um, imaginative. <laughs> To put it kindly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Warlord 1904 Gaming. Yes! Space Wolves. Space Wolves. Mm -hmm. Noah Campbell. If you could create an orc gun, what would it do? Don't say tons of DACA. Hmm. Tons of DACA. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, you go first. Uh, millions of DACA. Millions. No, okay. So this is what it would be. It would be like a gun so large, it's literally have to be placed on top of those giant squigots and it is fueled by millions of Gretchen. So basically you put all these Gretchens into this gun, so to speak, and it's gonna churn them into like a mushy, sporadic thing, and it's gonna fire this thing, and it's not gonna go into, um, like it's not actually gonna kill anybody. It's gonna fire all these like spore things into a planet, and eventually that planet will uh, explode with a bunch of orcs from like the core. So basically, it's like a orc multiplication device. It's a sperm gun. <laughs> basically, that's what it is. So a sperm gun that shoots sperm. sperm into the planet's core, and it just produces so much orc that it like, giant explodes. Giant orcs. And then they form into a giant orc. <laughs> and then it like becomes Gork and Mark's third cousin, yeah. twice removed. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I would do... I just had it and I forgot it. Oh, so it's like a like the portal gun where like you shoot like it shoots like one hole, you shoot another hole, you go through it and you come out the other hole because it would solve the problem of not being able to get into close combat. So check this out: you got a big mech, right? He has a, he's you attach him to a squad of thirty boys. He has this gun which works exactly or kind of the same as the um, shock attack gun. So, but the only difference is. You point it, you shoot, 
the um, a template, probably a small template somewhere. You gotta scatter. If it scatters off, wherever it scatters to, that's where it scatters to. So it scatters somewhere else. And now you wait for next turn and then you shoot again, but this time you shoot at your orcs and you you can scatter, no, yeah, you would have to scatter it. Mm -hmm. And if you hit, like if you get the hit mark, your squad just teleports to where the hole is. If it doesn't, it, it, the, you know, it, it appears somewhere else and other units can use that hole. That's um, pretty cool. It could be a one-time use too, just so it doesn't get OP. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, that's actually like the things you can do with that is crazy. Like, oh, there's a huge piece of terrain. Let me pull yeah. this terrain like in front of you guys. Now you can't charge me. And it would be a game changer too, because let's mm -hmm. say you're at the very last. Uh, well, you probably wouldn't use it to the last round, but like let's say you, if you could though. Yeah, you, and then you you want to get that um the objective. Yeah, or the um what is it called? Line, Behind enemy line lines. breaker. Line breaker. Yeah. You do that. Bam. You're there. It's an extra point. Yep. So that's what I would do. Would you be able to assault afterwards? Yes, of course, because <laughs> then it's like a drop pod, and drop pods, if you're a space wolf player, you should know that drop pods are space wolves. The world are good, but it would be better if you could actually charge. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know how you could use my sperm gun in an actual game, but... To impregnate things. <laughs> I see your Necron Overlord. Let me impregnate him. Yes. Well, there there used to be one that, like, there used to be a Mad Doc that would turn people into squigs. So it's like it could be a Mad Doc that impregnates a character and it explodes with a bunch of orcs coming out of it. Yeah. And then you got another mob. There you go. <laughs> a wild boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the ones from MTV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody, Ball. nobody's wilder than the Wild Boys. <laughs> All right. Last question. Uh, who do you got? Uh, I turn it off. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tanner Shy, you're the lucky guy. Well, I'm pretty sure that one of the lost Primarchs found him himself, lost in space and in time, separated from his physical form, stuck finding himself in different forms, different people, leaping from life to life, making certain that each ended out as it should. Moving on each time that these lives were right a bit. Hoping each time the next leap would be the leap home. I'm out. I'm motherfucking out. Peace. That's what he said. Okay. It's a good theory. Interesting. That he's like body hopping. But who knows. But thank you so much for the questions. Mm -hmm. Guys, be sure to comment down below on anything that we mentioned today or any questions that you guys would like us to answer for next week. We do these every single Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, and commenting. Uh, don't forget to hit us up on Patreon if you could. Facebook, Twitter, One Mind Syndicate. You know the deal. As always, he is... First one. Here with the Sound Alchemist, and we are fucking out. Peace. <laughs>